One of the biggest concerns in the financial markets in 2019 was something known as the repo market. This was one of the major reasons for the Federal Reserve starting once again to pump money into the financial system and it's likely to continue being a big topic in 2020 as there are still some major concerns. We've been focusing on this topic for our own research recently but before we share some of that with you we wanted to explain what a repo market is to get everyone up to speed. So here's your three minute explainer. <laughs> The repo market is often referred to as the plumbing of the financial system and just like the plumbing in your home, you're unlikely to think about how it operates each day until something goes wrong with it. So you'd be forgiven if you had no idea just how important the repo market was until you started hearing about all the issues with it in the financial news last year. But this is a market that has a turnover of one to two trillion dollars per day so it's pretty big. Repo stands for repurchase agreement and is basically a form of short-term borrowing where securities, and especially government securities, are used as collateral. The reason this is called a repurchase agreement rather than just a collateralized loan is down to the way the transaction is done. Essentially, the repo market is like a huge pawn shop that's pawn with a W. So, Let's say you have bank A, which is holding a lot of cash, more than they need, and you have bank B that has some treasury bonds, but needs to raise cash. In a repurchase agreement, bank B will sell its treasury bonds to bank A, but the agreement will state that bank B will repurchase the treasury bonds back from bank A at a later point in time for a higher price. This is usually overnight or within 48 hours, but it can sometimes be longer. Now, since Bank B is buying the treasuries back for a higher price, the difference between the price it sold them for and the price it buys them back for is the equivalent of paying interest for borrowing the money. This implied interest is known as the repo rate. In situations where there is demand for borrowing in the repo market, but not enough lending available, the repo rate will increase. Now this, in very basic terms, is what happened in September 2019, but we'll get into the reasons for that in another video. The party that's lending the money, in this case Bank A, will be institutions such as banks and money market funds. The borrowers, Bank B, will be institutions like investment banks, hedge funds and brokers. The Federal Reserve will also be involved in the repo market to help regulate bank reserves and the money supply. But typically, the lender's motivation for taking part in this deal is to make a relatively risk-free short-term return on its money. The reason this is relatively risk-free is because the securities are held as collateral. This means that if the borrower institution can't repurchase the securities as agreed, the lender can sell the securities in the market to make its money back. With this in mind, the value of the securities will always be higher than the amount of money they are being bought for. The difference between the value of the securities and the money exchanged is known as the haircut. If there is greater risk involved in the deal, the lender may ask for a larger haircut and a higher repo rate. It's these transactions at a huge scale that allow the market to function smoothly. It allows financial institutions to obtain liquidity for their day-to-day -day needs and facilitates all kinds of trading. So there's your three minute explainer of the repo market, more or less three minutes. If you like this video, please do hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, especially so you don't miss out on a deep dive into the issues with this important market. Thanks for watching, see you then.